Hello and what is up my friends, it's Thunderbob here and tonight we're going to be checking out Diablo 4 Beta, which has been going on. I did hit 25, I got the end screen for Act 1, uh, pretty much done everything I can. Um, this is Saturday night, I'm not going to be able to play I think tomorrow, so this is it for me for the weekend. But I did want to show off, I've made a Hydra Orb build, very similar to my favorite from Diablo 2. And uh, I'm going to show you the skills I'm using. I'm going to show you the gear I got. I'm using all legendaries at this stage. And then we're going to assault Core Dragon, which is a stronghold. Uh, this is basically like a human village that has been overrun by vampires. And you clear it out. My understanding is then the humans come and take it back. I've not really done any strongholds yet, so I'm kind of curious what this is all about. But that's what we're going to do tonight. I'm going to show you first off my build. Uh, and this may not be completely optimized, obviously we only have 25 skill points, this is not me being like authoritative, I've not played every build out there, but I've messed around with a lot of the skills, and this is just the one I've had fun with going through the game. Um, it's a mix of fire and ice, I think focusing on one or the other may be more powerful, but I'm having a lot of fun with this combination. So we're going to go through it, um, Frostbolt, uh, this is mostly just for generating mana when my other skills... Um, are eating up all my mana. So this is like my last resort. This does pretty much the lowest damage of all of my abilities, but it does not cost anything. Uh, I've got this uh, upgrade so it has a chance to explode, and then it gives me four mana on chilled or frozen enemies. And that's as far as I went into the basic skills. Then core, uh, I got uh, some plus skills here, but the one I'm actually using is frozen orb. I love frozen orb. This does crazy damage. So the shards are doing 200 damage. And then the explosion does 185. So this one cast can deal almost 400 damage. Uh, and then I'm also, let me back out for a minute. Um, I have an enchantment. And these are basically, um, you can take any of your skills and you can put it in this enchantment slot. And it will modify how you play. So Frozen Orb uh, has a 20% chance to cast on any non-basic skill I cast. So any of these I cast except for Frostbolt, which is basic, has a 20% chance to trigger a Frozen Orb. And my Frozen Orb, as you could see, is doing a lot of damage. So that's really cool. Like 20% of the time, when I cast Frozen Orb, I get a second Frozen Orb. How badass is that? There's other things I thought about using, like you could do Hydra, which every 300 mana you spend gives you um, a 500 Hydra for 5 seconds. I was doing the math, and I think the 20% chance for an orb is better, but there's a lot of cool, interesting thoughts uh, as far as how to use these enchantments. Uh, I, You know, you could dig through here for hours looking at all of these. I'll just kind of cycle through here in case anyone wants to pause the video and look at them. But, um, yeah, I could see how this could really augment your playstyle, and the fact that you get two of these slots is really cool. And uh, we'll go back to the skills here. So yeah, I've got uh, Frostbolt. I've got Frozen Orb. I did get a point here. So my first orb basically gets 30% increased damage every time. And then uh, I've got a chance to make my enemies vulnerable. And what vulnerable is, is when it triggers... Um, and I'm going to go to my character sheet here. Vulnerable enemies take 43% more damage. And I have pretty easy ways to make enemies vulnerable. So whenever I attack a vulnerable enemy, they're taking 43% more damage. It's almost like a crit, except you're, you're forcing it to happen in some way. So let's go back to our character screen. So I'm, I'm making 25% of my enemies vulnerable, and if they're frozen, it's a guaranteed vulnerable keep going down. I'm using teleport. I'm getting this actually from an item, but I just, I've enjoyed teleport, being able to move out of the way and stuff. One thing here is there is a long cooldown in this, though it seems like you should be able to bring it down through um, some skills and through items. I don't know if you're ever going to get to the point where it has no cooldown. Maybe, but I kind of doubt it. Uh, I'm also using Frost Nova. I've just got one point in the core skill, and then I've got both of the upgrades. The nice thing here, this completely freezes enemies, which which uh, really synergizes well with the Greater Frozen Orb, but also um, this makes any frozen enemy from Frost Nova vulnerable, and it makes bosses vulnerable for 8 seconds. So every time I Frost Nova a boss, I get 8 seconds of doing 40, what was it, 46% more damage to them. So I find this really fun to use along with my other skills. Then we get down to Hydra. 
I, uh, I have a legendary item which lets me have a second Hydra. You can see it says maximum of two Hydras. By default, you only have one Hydra. Let's do the math on this real quick. I can summon a three-headed Hydra that does uh, 173 damage for 10.7 seconds. I think it's doing like 10 or so attacks per head. So 173 times 10, that's what, 1,730 damage times three heads times two. You could see how this damage scales pretty crazy. So for 40 mana, I'm going to quickly do the math on this. And actually, I've got the upgrade here, so I have one additional head as long as I'm healthy, and most of the time I keep my health maxed out. So I just did the math, that's 13,600 damage. Also, after a critically strike, my Hydras gain 30% critical strike chance. So I'm dealing way more damage because they're critting also. So for 20 mana, I get 13,000 damage, and kind can I compare that 40 mana to do about 400 damage. Of course, that's assuming all of your Hydras are hitting, they're not overkilling and enemies are in range and all that but i i really look I, hydra i think my my di highest damage dealer by far i messed around with ice blades a little bit i think it's a lackluster version of hydra basically uh i i kind of messed with these but most of them i felt like were too costly uh to really compare against my frozen orb maybe there's builds that work with them but i just i wasn't enjoying it as much as frozen orb and I got down to the Inferno just because it's so badass. I'm going to show you that. It looks so cool. It doesn't do that much damage. It's just a cool looking spell. And this is a, basically as deep into the tree that I could get. Like you can't get all the way down to the um, passives in the beta because you can only get to 25. I don't think there's any way to get that deep. And uh, oh, just to show you, if I wanted to refund and respect, it is costing me 2,700 gold because it does scale up with uh with each level so yeah next thing i want to look is just the gear and not all of this is fully optimized i really haven't like done a million runs most of this i found just while beating the main campaign but i do have legendaries in each spot uh, this was actually a rare that i upgraded um i imprinted it with that ability down there and uh, i like it because it gives me the extra hydra that's the main reason i'm using it Got some armor here. Um, not the most beneficial. It's got that cold damage and the percentage damage increase. These gloves give me um, the stats. It gives me the critical hit. Uh, I would probably re-roll this. Um, that fireball really isn't benefiting me much. And the charge bolt isn't great for my build, but it's what I've got so far. Uh, this actually has the same uh, barrier as the item up here. And I'm not sure if it stacks. Like, you see how it's grayed out up here? Yeah, I think you don't actually get the benefit of both. I think it takes the higher one. So, that's actually kind of wasted, but eh, you live and you learn. Uh, boots here give me teleport. That's how I've got teleport. Stats, poison resist, willpower. Um, there's some cool stats that come on these boots. Um, like... Evade briefly grants you 40% movement speed. This is evade down here. There's also some that'll give you like extra charges of evade. That kind of an interesting mechanic on the boots. Also, some boots will have increased movement speed, which is nice. Got this amulet. You get this during the main story, and I should have socket this. I don't know why I didn't already. Um, it's got a really cool shield, and the guy you get this from, he's my hero. He's my buddy. Uh, long live Vigo. A ring here, full damage, fire damage, vulnerable damage. This increases that vulnerable damage that we were talking about earlier. And uh, fire damage, cold damage, thorns damage. This one actually gives me a lot of my mana back. One resource every time uh, you hit enemy with crowd control. And since chill is counted as crowd control, that's a lot of extra mana back. Um, you get a bubble around you for 7.5 seconds when you are hit while not healthy. And at the bottom, what healthy is, yeah. And lastly, the weapon here. This is the biggest part of this build. This is how I have two Hydras out. And I imprinted this. And actually, I thought it was going to give me two Hydras because it said if you put it on a two-hander, it gives you 100% bonus. But what it actually did is it changed the duration reduction from 22 to 11. It didn't double the number of active Hydras like I was hoping for. Um, but yeah, that is the build. That's the gear. Let's go and kick some ass.
All right, I don't even know how to get in here yet. This is literally, I think it's over here, the first time I've done a stronghold. I, I was mostly focusing on the main quest and getting to level 25, which I just basically did uh, before I reached this point. Can I climb up? I can. I think the whole point here is you've got to clear all the enemies. Well, look at these Hydras go. Hydras, by far my biggest damage dealers. Watch that. I love the snake. What is the lightning? And again, I don't really know how hard this is going to be. It's my first go at these uh, strongholds. It didn't say like it was recommended for, um, you know, uh, single player, multiplayer, whatnot. So do these just endlessly respawn? I can't seem to interact with it. Purge or Dawn of Vampires. It's got like a shield on it. Like I was thinking when the vampires around it died, I might be able to... Oh, I'm an idiot. There we go. Okay. You can see like the tentacles, so that should have been more obvious, but... The light did not protect these knights from the vampires. And most of the dungeons in the game have this weird thing where it's like, you hit two things and then you go for the middle thing. Like, I don't know, it's like, they love that formula. Yeah, so this is a, it's a fun build. It reminds me a lot of Diablo 2. Uh, this was a build that I think they made a lot stronger over time. Okay, so all of the little, little boards here. It looks like I gotta go up there. I need time. Seems like I can go down, but not back up. Is there any? Okay, there's one of those. And that vulnerable definitely makes a big difference. That's like 50 You know what? I'm not getting all that many drops. Like I feel like this is not crazy good drops like I was I don't know. I was expecting something better. You know where I got most of my legendaries actually was gambling. I've got a video to show that. I got like I had five hundred of these Oobles, and I got, um, I got five legendaries in that time. I'm stuck. Hey, like, why are not... I'm not getting any items from these guys. Maybe the big boss here will, will drop something better. Another one of the things I gotta clear up. Ah, oh, I'm missing that. That thing really, I feel like, doesn't do enough damage to warrant 
Maybe if you max it out, but for like the long cooldown, it feels kind of wasted. Hydra's really cool for these tumor things because you just like cast one Hydra and and they, they die basically. Is there another one? The bloom leads beneath the cathedral. That must be the source. May you forever be shunned by the night. Like a rabid mongrel, you will turn on your master of the <laughs> Ooh, I teleport that whole pack. I'm assuming I do not want to be in that lightning. There's that double uh, frozen orb. Destroy the Vampiric Aberration. Okay. Delve into the archive so I can keep going down, I guess. Oh, it's just the boss. I like the mechanics where, like, you can see when he's gonna drop additional. Uh, health potions, like, that's pretty cool. Okay, so I've, I've got to pop those little tumor things, it seems. Okay, so that thing, I have to be, oh god, that's doing a lot of damage. Is that it? Rekindle the Wanderer Shrine to Conquer. Okay. What does that mean? Kindle. There's like something here. It almost seems like I should be able to interact with it, right? Did, it, did this bug out? You see a shrine anywhere? Need to go back out later. Over here, maybe. Something seems. I don't feel like that's how it's supposed to be. Huh? I thought I just liberated this place. So, that was a thing. I was kind of expecting, like... Like, what I was reading with these strongholds, like, you clear it out, and then, like, the humans come and take it back over, but that... Like, clearly didn't happen here? Maybe if I leave and come back, it'll... Or maybe it's just bugged? I don't know. If, if you got a different reaction after clearing this, uh, let me know. But, uh, yeah, that was... My stronghold really wasn't too difficult, um, to be honest. Uh, for this build, I feel like I'm pretty powerful. I've got like enough defensive capabilities, got enough damage. Yeah, I'm gonna end the video here. Uh, if you like what I'm doing, please do like, subscribe, drop me a comment below, and thank you again for watching, everyone. Have a great night.